I'm going to link this in. And uh, when they hit the ground, again, remember to set this to object. You don't want them to bounce. Well, it's up to you what you want to what you want to happen here. I'm just going to put in some bounce and surface values. See what happens. And as you can see, they kind of stick and move a little bit. Can increase the bounce. Can make it more splashy. Uh, reduce the surface. I think the bounce and the surface are kind of tied. Obviously, if the surface is 100%. Particles can't really bounce, so you need to find like a kind of halfway uh, uh, compromise between the two values. But um, as you can see, they're kind of reacting, and that's sufficient for this example. I'm just going to move this up, and now we just want to pass these into the final event. So again, we're going to use a PSET data, standard PSET data. Again, add the on and the group port. So particle, we're refer referencing these particles. On, again, event. So when this event is true, switch this on. Now, again, we have to create a helper P group, not the standard, the helper P group. Link that in, go to thinking particles, and drag and drop the final group. So when this becomes activated, you want them to become ground collision particles. And hopefully, if I play this, the ground particles should uh, turn green. Yep, uh, again, you can't really see this clearly, so I'm just going to boost the green value. So we got them, whoops, changing value, and again, I think the problem here is the gravity needs to be respecified. Um, it's quite annoying. <laughs> so we have to, uh, I guess, I mean, if anyone knows a quicker solution, please let me know. <laughs> P past the ground collision. I think we can uh, control drag this. Yep, let's create a duplicate. And we just make sure the gravity is linked to the new ground collision particles. I'm sure there's a way to kind of triple link all three. But, um, hmm, something strange seems to be happening here. It's as if they're falling down the side. That is bizarre. Um, could be to do with the deflector. Maybe if I change this to two side, just bounce a bit. It's too bouncy. And uh, hmm. Yeah, I think the gravity is basically. Maybe we don't want the gravity to kick in here. I'll just delete that node, see what happens. Yeah, a lot of fiddling around. Maybe. Are they traveling up? Are they traveling along? Yeah, they're traveling up. Anyway, um, that's quite annoying. I think we'll just, yeah, I think we need to maybe increase the surface value so they kind of stick. Yep. Increasing the surface value causes them to kind of stick to the surface. In fact, I think you would have to remove bounce altogether at this point, maybe. Obviously, if you set surface to 100, there's no movement at all. Set it to 91. Try and find that kind of nice compromise, maybe a little bit of energy. And I think that's a little bit better. I don't think they're traveling upwards.
But yeah, anyway, uh, that's the basics of creating a simple little system. And now that you know how to kind of collide particles with uh, objects, you can uh, create all kinds of different uh, systems. And um, remember to kind of organize your particles into different groups. Uh, just makes it a lot more manageable. Obviously, uh, this isn't the most elegant kind of uh, espresso setup, but it's a, it's a very basic setup, and um, hopefully, it will help you kind of move on to more complicated setups. But yeah, it's worth studying all these different nodes because they all behave in a, a completely different ways, and there's certain uh, little bugs and kind of features that need to be you can only uh, understand them by studying them. Uh, and becoming uh, used to them. But yeah, so that's the basic system. Then what we can do is um, we can you can add meta balls to this. Now I think I've been working in quite a small scale, and meta balls is uh, notorious for kind of uh, blowing geometry up really large. Um, so a quick workaround is. First, we need to add particle geometry to the scene, so we can attach geometry to these particles. At the moment, nothing's rendering. If you want to see something render, you need to create a particle geometry. Uh, we could create, like, I don't know, a quick polygon. Hit C to make it editable. Particle geometry. I'm just going to add the all group in. Now we need to go back into the Expresso and we can add a node, Thinking Particles, Shape, drag and drop Polygon and link this up. Now if I hit play, as you can see the geometry is kind of linked to the we can see the geometry thanks to the particle geometry because I set it to all it's basically it doesn't matter what event it is it's affecting all of them and now if we hit render we can see the plane I'm just going to add a light in quickly just because you can't really see anything mm, made it even worse <laughs> anyway uh, we can also adjust the particle size, not through here, but if you go into the Expresso, new node, think in particles, particle size, link this up to the particle birth, set the size to 100%, we'll get the exact same size value as the polygon we created. Maybe slightly bigger, actually, no, it should be the same size. Anyway point is, if we try and then drag this particle geometry into meta balls, we get this huge lump. And it doesn't matter how small we make these particles. Point 0.1. Make it tiny. It's still, it's still it's too big. And we can even try and uh, make this polygon object really small. 0.01. And the meta, there's nothing we can do, it's just too big. So, one workaround is I'm just going to detach. I'm just going to set that back up to full scale. One workaround is to make this obviously editable and then delete three of the vertexes until you're left with just one vertex. And uh, I'm just going to center the axis. So now we've got this polygon object which consists of just one vertex and this is like a quick hack. If you know any uh, different solution please let me know because I don't. <laughs> I'll put the particle geometry back into Metaball. And it's still massive. We can add the whole value. I think the maximum is a thousand. That usually helps. And <laughs> subdivisions are too low. Now we're starting to get somewhere. As you can see the meta balls are ugly but uh, reacting a lot better. 
and uh, obviously this is no match uh, to real flow but um, well it's looking a lot better than the massive kind of blob we got a minute ago you know, exponential fall off helps kind of squeeze it in a little bit more I think um, oops getting a little bit of slowdown I'm on a laptop so yeah, exponential fall off I think we then have to reduce hull until we kind of find that the thing is you begin to get a kind of separation so that's kind of maybe it was better off before another thing you can play with is uh, the particle count maybe maybe adding more particles will help make that up to 600 now see what happens and uh, it's basically just a compromise between all these values and then then if we hit the exponential um, it's very slow and I'm just gonna as you can see the system is crawling at the moment but yeah um, the best trick I know is the the one polygon trick I mean the one vertex trick uh, yes yeah, just looking very ugly so uh, increasing the particles obviously didn't help so yeah I mean um, if you if you have any workarounds please let me know if you know any neat ways to kind of attach metabol geometry to a particle system uh, it'd be nice to hear uh, I think this is about as good as it gets for me. Obviously, uh, one thing you could do is um, when you're creating this kind of system, make sure the scales are really quite big. Obviously, uh, I think I'm working at quite a small scale here, so uh, you can kind of see each blob quite clearly. But if you worked in a quite a large scale, you'd be able to maybe um, get better results because these uh, blobs would be a lot smaller. Obviously, uh, you're going to get more uh, kind of slow down. It'll, it'll become more uh, calculation intensive, but I guess it's one workaround. So yeah, uh, I hope you learned something. That's a very basic uh, par uh, thinking particle system. Added a few meta balls. I taught you how to do the one vertex trick to avoid huge uh, meta ball geometry. And uh, if you know any tricks, please let me know. Type it in the comment section. And uh, if you like this, please subscribe. And um, that's it. See you later.